What's up YouTube, Oliver here. Uh, in today's video we're going to be looking at the Ultimate iPad writing experience. So I'm going to be showing you three different things in this video. Uh, so the first thing is a screen protector which makes your iPad feel like it's paper basically. It gives it a matte texture. So it's just like writing with pen on paper. So this is my iPad Pro 10.5 inch here and I'm using the paper like screen protector by Safa Products. So this is it basically. You get two of these in a pack and it is quite interesting. Now the thing is, I'm going to be honest, I've never been a huge fan of screen protectors um, for a number of reasons, mainly just because they're really difficult to apply without getting bubbles in the screen and you know little bits of dust and I am a bit of a perfectionist so things like that does tend to bother me. But I must admit this is very easy to apply if you follow the instructions uh, as you can see here, basically you start by cleaning the screen with a wet cloth and then a dry cloth. You line up the tabs so you kind of create the, the sort, it helps you sort of line up the screen um, with using the stickers and then you basically open it like a door hinge, peel off the back and then you can just use a card. You get everything you need in the pack, uh, it doesn't include a card. Reason being is because most people are going to have some sort of credit card or something in their wallets. Um, which is just as easy to use but basically the pack does include you get your wet cloth you get um, these which basically is a dust absorber as well as uh, the alignment stickers and then you get your little dry cloth of course the screen protector itself and a couple of bits of paperwork that just explains how to apply it now one thing worth pointing out and basically it does give a really nice matte texture. There's a lot less glare, you know, if you're, if you're holding it up when it's quite a bright day or something like that, um, there is a lot less glare going to be on the screen. It gives a really nice matte texture. The way it works is there's kind of like a microfiber uh, material which has a little bit of a grittiness to it. Um, one thing is, and it doesn't show fingerprints up a lot, but it does tend to get kind of oily. You can't really see on camera, but it kind of, because it's sort of a matte texture, it does um, have a tendency to you know kind of get a bit grubby because the kind of oils off your fingers get absorbed more and it's harder to rub away the official advice is that you can use a very slightly damp cloth and just rub it and it should work i haven't tried that yet um, but the texture is very nice uh, like i say you get two in a pack when you buy it uh, you know so if you do make a mistake you've got a spare one it also means if after some time you find the texture wears out you could also replace it. It is supposed to last a long time. I've had mine a few weeks. It's been fine. I've really enjoyed using it, but I have heard of a prolonged use. Um, it may tend to lose its texture just because it gets clogged up with sort of dust and grease. Again, if you give it a clean with a, a damp cloth, it's supposed to do the trick. Um, but generally these do last a long time. Um, one thing I've noticed when I am using the iPad, particularly if I'm I'm using an app which has you know very bright white background say if I'm drawing on a white canvas or something like that is that it does give sort of a rainbow effect if you, you can sort of see the individual pixels or something it, it just the way it works and I'm using a 10.5 inch iPad Pro um, there's a picture I don't know how well you can see but it does kind of leave a little bit of an effect um, on the screen and you can almost sort of see that, but it's barely noticeable to be quite honest with you. Um, it is barely noticeable and it's worth it because you do get so many benefits from that nice matte texture. And it does definitely feel a lot better to write on that. And it is a very realistic like paper compared to using rubber pencil tip on a glass iPad screen. It really does make a difference. And to demonstrate that, uh, I'm now gonna show you two different apps so I've got GoodNotes, which is a really useful app for, for note taking and all that kind of thing. And then I've got Procreate, which is a fantastic app for doing drawing and sketching for any sort of illustrator or designer or artist. So, you know, these are both tools which should be massively enhanced by the use of the uh, paper-like screen protector. Um, so let's have a look on the iPad now and I'll basically go through the features of some of those apps. Okay, so this is the first app that I'm going to show you, which is GoodNotes. So I've previously reviewed an app called Notability uh, on the channel and I'll put a link to that there now so if you, if you click you'll be able to see that but basically it's for me the kind of main contenders when it comes to note taking apps on the iPad are GoodNotes and Notability. 
Um, and in my opinion, good notes actually is slightly better. So basically, this is what happens when you're first presented with good notes. You get a nice visual um, kind of presentation of all of your notebooks and you can choose whether you want these to have front covers, whether you want them to have, you know, whatever kind of paper template. So to and you can also put these into different categories. So you basically tap categories and you get different options. So um, if we press the plus and create a new notebook and we give this a, a name here, let's just call it uh, YouTube. You get to choose a front cover and there's like various different, various different types of front covers and you also get to choose you know anything you want say so we'll go for that and you get to choose any paper type so you've got various different choices the paper which i'm going to use this is actually a template that i created myself but another really good thing about this app is that you do have the possibility of being able to use your own custom templates import any pdf and you can create notebooks using that as the paper um, so this is my rule with margin and let's press uh, get rid of that and press create and basically you can uh, write anything you want here and it does feel really nice with that paper like screen protector as well it gives it that nice grittiness which it just feels like you're writing on paper um, and basically you just swipe to the side and you get your page and you can zoom in and I have actually set my um, menu bar to be at the bottom because I prefer the, the page to kind of take precedence and then your options to be underneath. Um, I'm going to do this in landscape mode because it's going to be easier for this video, uh, but you can do it in portrait mode as well, which is going to be more like holding like a, an A4 sheet of paper or something like that. And basically you just write what you want. So you, know, you might put your date here. And a title there and that sort of thing you know really easy to do so basically you can just obviously swipe through your document you drag to the side to create a new page pages in this work side to side and um, so we'll have a look at the tools along the bottom so the first thing is if you tap this sort of four squares you get the thumbnail view um, of your notebook you can just tap any of those to go to the pages you can move them around you've got bookmarks pdf outlines uh, and you can also add new pages and you know like i say if you hold on these, you can rearrange the notebook quite easily and that sort of thing. The next tool you can add, so if it's for importing things, so you can add an image, text box, bookmark, you can add pages and you know import that sort of thing. Go to import, you get the option of importing from different storage services. Next one along is your shape tool. So what that means is when that tool is enabled, you go ahead and draw something just freehand and it changes that into a shape. Really nice if you're going to be, you know, quickly drawn diagrams and that kind of thing. Really good feature there. And then you've got your zoom tool and that lets you zoom right in and write whatever you want up here. Of course, I'm in the shape mode, so let's change it to a straight line. You've also got your, your pen tool here. Now, you, your presets that come on, you've got various different colors and thicknesses. And then you can also go to custom and that lets you choose um, any color that you want and also you, know, you can drag the slider to adjust the thickness if you go to enter color you can also type in a specific value hexadecimal value um, and then that allows you to you know you can really narrow down um, a specific thickness and color the, the customizability with this is just amazingly useful your highlighter similar sort of thing there and then you've got your eraser you get different thicknesses you have a selection tool, so that you sort of lasso tool, you can kind of draw around something and then choose to, you know, change the colour, for example. Or, you know, you can move it around. So that's, that's a really nice tool. And then your no pencil means whatever you do here, it just moves, sort of pans the page instead of drawing. Go back to say the pen tool. And obviously when you've got the freehand pen tool, um, you know, you can write all sorts of nice things on whatever you want. So, you know, really nice way of writing notes. So quick and easy, especially when you're using the Apple Pencil, it gives you the ultimate experience. And I think the paper like screen protector also really makes it just feel like you're literally writing on a paper notebook. I highly recommend this.
And, you know, you've got a menu down here as well as you undo and redo tools, self-expandry. You can clear the page, export, which you can choose to export, you know, the current pages, say a PDF and that kind of thing. You can print, you can search. And another really good feature of this is you can actually search handwriting. So if you've written something um, like where I've written there, this is a test. So if we just press on search and you type something in, it actually recognizes your handwriting there which says this is a test and highlights it. Really nice feature. Obviously you've got all your sort of other options here. Smart stylus, well obviously I've got the Apple Pencil switched on. Uh, more options, you can do things like changing your paper template. And as I was mentioning before, there's a huge amount of built-in uh, paper templates that you can use. So you've got things like graph papers, you've got uh, iPhone size templates, you've got all your sort of standard plain and lined paper. You've even got things like, you know, music papers. You've got some luxury writing papers in different columns. So, you know, I, I do highly recommend uh, good notes. If you're going to do a lot of note taking, if you know, for example, if you're a student like me, um, really, really useful tool to have. So highly recommended. OK, so let's move on to Procreate now. So there's a few sample drawings in here and a couple of things I was just testing out. So let's create a new template. So Procreate is basically an app for artists, illustrators, designers. It's basically just for drawing on the iPad. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's basically you can just sketch, you can draw. There's loads of different tools. It's, it's a really good application for that. So new canvas, I'll just make it the screen size by default. Um, and it creates a new canvas, white background. Now, if you want to say, I'll go through the tools. So the uh, menu options here, so you've got all your actions, you can change to a light interface. Although I do actually quite like the, the interface just the way it is, you can change things like delays and there's all sorts of advanced tools there, but you can also go through things like image to insert things. You can put perspective grids on. I mean, there's so many different tools. You can share it as like a Procreate or a PSD file. I haven't got time in this video to go through every single um, tool, but that's where all your preferences are. If you'd like to see a tutorial on how to use Procreate, do let me know and I can make a more detailed video about that. Adjustments, so you can adjust things like opacities, blurs, hues, that sort of thing. This tool is like a selection tool, so you can just draw like a freehand an area that you want to select. And then the final one's a sort of freehand tool. It doesn't do anything because I haven't got any active layers, but when you have a layer, with so like, you know, if you've done a sketch, it'll allow you to select that. Um, obviously the next thing along is your brush. You've got loads of loads of different brushes here. You can obviously add all your own custom brushes as well. Um, so you've got like pencils, you've got different types of pens, um, calligraphy options, all sorts of paint brushes and artistic tools. I mean, I'm not going to go through all of them, but there's loads of different brushes there. And you can um, go in, let's just go to, uh, I don't know, gel pen. And if you want to adjust that you tap on it again and then it basically gives you all the details of it you can adjust all of the dynamics of the shape the you know the stroke obviously the apple pencil um has if you tilt it it gives a kind of you know like if you tilt the pencil on the side it sort of gives a thicker line it works really well with some brushes and it just basically lets you customize all the options specific to the pressure sensitivity and all that kind of thing with the apple pencil um, and those are all your brush tools. And then this tool, which is, it's it's very similar. You can also add, or you, you know, select a sort of brush. It's a smudge tool, basically lets you, as far as I'm aware, sort of smudge the kind of area you're working on on the canvas. And then you've got the eraser and you've got your layers. So by default, you get given um, a background layer and then a standard layer. And you've also got your color picker. So you can pick it, color, however you want to do that. You can also, um, go to a classic view, you've got the values, so hue, saturation, brightness, red, green, blue, or hex code, and you can also choose predefined color palettes there. And basically, if you want to do some drawing, it's, it's really easy to do. So let's say I want to add a grid first. So if we choose the appropriate brush, it's under textures, grid, and basically these sliders down the side as well, I should point out, are the size, so I'll just make it the largest and the opacity. Now, if you want to move the canvas, you just use two fingers, you can rotate it, move it, you know, another thing that I really love. And if you just basically draw, without taking the pencil off, draw the grid across the whole canvas, 
you can basically get a grid which is quite nice if you want to draw things and you know you want to be a bit more accurate and of course because it works with layers you can then go to your layer palette add another layer and then you can just turn the grid on and off I quite like the 6 speed pencil and of course say you want to go to that layer you just tap the M you can adjust the opacity so if you just want a really faint grid in the background you can do that you know really easy to customize sort of how you want the layers and I like to have my canvas a little bit of a tilt when I'm going to sketch something um, I just find that quite useful but the fact is you can just use two fingers and you can basically just have the canvas however you want it um, and you, know, you can just draw something this is a pencil and it's pressure sensitive. Say so I want to just draw a cube. Really realistic, you know, it's just like using an actual 6B pencil. Um, you know, really easy to use. And then of course, when I was mentioning before, say you want to shade that in, you just tilt the apple pencil on the side and you kind of get a, a sort of shade tool, which is just like using an actual pencil on paper. If we want to do something where it's a bit more of a solid line, Let's go to technical pen here. This is like a, you know, quite a thick uh, tool there. So if you press quite hard, you get quite a thick line and then obviously you press thinner because of the pressure se sensitivity on the Apple Pencil. It works really nicely and it just generally is. It's a really useful tool, it has so many great features. Um, and I just personally think it's so easy to use. It's so intuitive. And there's so many possibilities that, you know, there's a lot that you can do with it. It's, it's very versatile, great app for sketching and drawing. You can export in many different formats. It's incredibly responsive. The tools are very realistic. Um, and in general, it's just a really nice app. It's, in my opinion, it's the best one that you can get for the iPad, the best drawing app that you can get. And, you know, the paper like screen protector also does just improve that experience that little bit more it just gives it that more realistic feel if you're going to use you know the, the rubber tip of the apple pencil it just makes it feel that little bit nicer okay well i hope this video has been useful and i hope you've been able to answer your questions about the paper like screen protector and about procreate and good notes if there's anything you would like to see me review please do leave a comment um, and i'll do my best to get a hold of it and produce a video whether that be an app whether it be a, an accessory you know, whatever it might be if there is something you'd like to learn more about please do leave a comment if you like the video please do thumbs it up and for more videos like this coming your way please do subscribe to this channel well thanks for watching and bye for now